Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. As you're celebrating Thanksgiving today, think about the pilgrims and communism. How did they ultimately deal with the issue in their communities, and what does it say for us today? I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, this is a great day of Thanksgiving. It's beginning my favorite time of the year. Thanksgiving and Christmas are my favorite times of the year, and it's a great time to be around family and friends and literally to thank God for the blessings that we have and to thank God for this country, and certainly having come through this election, we need to continue to be faithful and thank God for the America that we have, and also recommit ourselves to fight for the values that make America great, those foundational values. But as we go back and we look at the beginning of Thanksgiving, we go back and look at the pilgrims, some people have this idea that they were communal, and for a time they were communal, sort of communist in that type of communal relationship. But something significant happened in their existence that ultimately made them realize that this communal or communism was a flawed concept. Well, you know, every time communism has has been tried, going all the way back to the pilgrims, it has failed, uh, catastrophically failed. And it failed catastrophically in those days. Uh, Governor William Bradford painted a picture of uh, destitutes, this is according to our friends over at the Heritage Foundation, settlers uh, selling their clothes and bed coverings for food while others became servants to the Indians. And they pointed out that under this communal living, a very uh, the, the, a small uh, focused example of, of the larger uh, communist philosophy, that people were were saying i'm not going to go i'm not going to go out and work for another man's wife i'm not going to go out and you know to feed another man's wife they had to get it back to the a free market system that said uh, if the individual works the individual takes care of himself his family yes we we have charity we take care of other individuals but if you try to compel charity through a communist system, a communal system of living, it fails in every instance. Yeah, Bradford described the incident uh, that they experienced before they moved to a free market as very dire. He recounted how one settler was gathering shellfish along the shore, and he was, quote, so weak, he stuck his fist in the mud and was found dead in the place. They were Servants to the Indians, they were cutting wood and fetching water in exchange for a cap full of corn. It was a miserable existence. And the colony's leaders identified the source of the problem as a particularly vile form of what Bradford called, quote, communism, close quote. Communism. Back then, he's talking about this was the problem (laughs) that ultimately caused this dire situation. So property in Plymouth, he observed, was communally owned and cultivated, and this system taken away Property and bringing it into the Commonwealth bred confusion and discontent, according to Bradford, and related much employment that would have been to the settlers' benefit and comfort. It actually retarded uh, much employment. So in other words, it really disincentivized people when you're bringing in the property of individuals and you're then making it commonly owned by everybody. There was no reason for them to have any incentive to go back and do some more work. So he realized that they had to shift from this injustice to a more free market uh, approach and move away from the communism. And that shift made a radical change in their economic status, in their living status, and in their ability to survive. Well, the famine nearly wiped out the uh, Plymouth Colony settlers in in 1623. Bradford, who was a, a, a profoundly religious man, uh, it said that he saw the hand of God in the, the pilgrim's economic recovery, and that recovery was when they went to a, a a responsible free market system. Their success, he observed, quote, may well evince the vanity of that conceit that the taking away of property would make men happy and flourishing as if they were wiser than God. Bradford summarized, God in his wisdom saw another course fitter for them. So, you know, 
People say, well, you're a Christian. You should be supporting a communist or a socialist ideology. No, the communist or socialist ideology, God has made it clear the system that works. And, and But we don't need to look to the Plymouth colony to find out that uh, that communism is going to fail in every instance. You know, Matt, I've always wanted to visit. I've visited Europe before, but I've never visited Greece. I've always wanted to visit Greece. Well, we may not need to now because as we adopt a... a a system like this at the Plymouth Colony here in the United States that President Obama has been pushing, we know what's going to happen. We need only look to Greece. We need only look to the Plymouth Colony to see how that kind of system will and can and will fail catastrophically. Well, you know, Bradford, uh, looking at this change from the communism or communal living to a free market society, he said, quote, this had very good success. He says, for it made all hands very industrious. What a surprise. You know, you give people the ability to work and enjoy the fruits of their labor. What a surprise that they become very industrious. What a surprise that when you take what they actually do and take it away and share it with others, they ultimately have a disincentive. There was uh, somebody that did something on YouTube recently during Halloween and had a number of kids come to the house. Yeah. And uh, he took some of the candy from, he looked at all the different people that had the bags and the, the kid that had less candy kid that had more candy took the kid's candy that had more and stuck it in the kid's candy uh, bag that had less. Well, obviously that didn't make the kids that had done very well very happy. Made the kid that didn't have very much, I guess, happy. But they ultimately protested. That's exactly what this government under President Barack Obama is wanting to do. Redistribute what he calls the wealth. To literally have a communal kind of living to punish those who are successful. To punish those who want to work hard and, and sacrifice, who ultimately want to go through hard life in, in Knox and education and put their life and their business and their security uh, at risk. He wants to punish those and move it around to other people who are not uh, working in that respect. And in doing so, you disincentivize everybody. Bradford said, with, with regards to what happened there, he said, in fact, quote, much more corn was planted than otherwise would have been, and productivity increased. Women, he said, for example, went willingly into the field and took their little ones with them to set corn. Yeah. They said, you know, as a family affair, let's get involved in this because we actually see the fruits of our labor. You know, Scripture says there's nothing new under the sun, Matt, and uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.10 says, even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. That's not a threat. That's just a reality. Actions have consequences. Inaction has consequences. And now we see a system of government here in the United States developing where the scales are tipping, where where I, I, I say they're, you know, uh, Mitt Romney got in trouble for talking about the 47%, but where the takers are beginning to outnumber the makers. And when that happens, it provides a disincentive when you have a nanny state, a government that provides everything or promises to it, never can, uh, that the takers will sit back on their haunches and do nothing and say, give me, give me, give me. It's an entitlement mentality. Well, that disincentivizes the makers. If they're working and having everything stolen from them to take care of those who refuse to eat and are being fed with the fruits of their labor, well, then they're going to sit back and say, well, then why should I work? And, and, the, and what the end result is? Uh, the Plymouth Colony. Well, Israel, <laughs> Israel, the nation of down. Israel, went through this. When they were founded, they were founded more from a communal communism type of socialism platform. In fact, many of them came from the Soviet Union, and they were Jews there. They came to the, the uh, nation of Israel. They came from that socialism background. So government was doing a lot of things. By the 1982, inflation had hit about 500%. Then treasurer, uh, minister of the treasury, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, ultimately he changed the policies. He divested many of these holdings that the government had operated within the telecommunication system and so forth and put it into private enterprise. It ultimately hurt him politically. He was able to bounce back and later become prime minister the first time and now prime minister the second time. But those were consequential decisions on him politically. But as a result of that, Israel has skyrocketed now in its productivity. And I could spend a whole program on the economic free enterprise engine of success that Israel has become around the world. And it's because they moved from a communism socialism market to a free market enterprise system. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. We want to 
wish you from Liberty Council and all the family of Liberty Council a very happy Thanksgiving. We pray that this is a great time for celebration and reflection and prayer for your families and for the future and for this country. We live at very challenging times, to say the least. But we can't give up. We must remain faithful. We must maintain our thanksgiving. We must also maintain a faithful commitment to the values on which America was founded. Go to Liberty Council's website for more information. Remember Liberty Council at your year-end giving, in your prayers, and your financial support. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.